Yo, what's happening? How you doing? Welcome back to another video. If you're new, my name is Niall Wilson. This is um, his, I don't know why I refer to myself in the third person. This is my second channel. 2021 started off with the huge announcement and retirement of, of Niall Wilson's gymnastics career. So I created this channel to, uh, to not have to be the gymnast guy anymore and just be me, the person. You've clicked on this video because I want to tell you a story. It's story time today. I recently uploaded myself eating a full day of my girlfriend's diet, who was an acrobat, and was fairly open and honest about um, sort of mental health towards food, eating disorders, my own struggles throughout the years of being a professional athlete. And the response was incredible. Uh, from you guys just thanking, you know, being for, for being so open and, and I realise and I know how much people, how many people struggle with that kind of thing. Today's story is about my journey with food and with my weight loss, I'm going to say weight loss, over sort of the last three years and, and how it all happened and just to, just to be a, a bit of a raw, open, honest story time. Partly on this channel, I just want to do story time. Um, which could hopefully inspire you, could, could give you some insight. If you are struggling with similar things related, mentally related to food, um, it can help in any way, shape or form. So let's get started. I used to be a freaking beast. When I started, when I hit puberty, went through 17, 18 years old, um, I put on weight fast. It usually happens as an athlete. You kind of, I think gymnastics certainly delays puberty, without a doubt. I think just the stress on your growth plates and everything like that. Anyway, I hit it. You put on weight quick, and I sort of settled in around 2014 as I turned 18 and as I was senior, at around 66 kilograms. And I was competing at world level, Commonwealth champion, you know, world finalist at 18 at around 66 kilograms. Now, following those, those few years to follow up until the Olympics, I was consistently between 66 and 68 kilograms. That was now Wilson. I'd found it kind of, I was struggling at that time with binge eating a little bit and certainly battling my way through it with the sort of extremes of what my life and my job was being an athlete. Did the Olympics, usually as a gymnast, when you build up to a competition, you start to eat slightly better and just sort of get a little bit lighter. My comp weight was usually around 65 and I loved it. That was fine by me. I could do all the gymnastics I wanted to do. I was strong on rings. I was a good all rounder. I was, you know, Olympic medalist on high bar. I competed in the Gold Coast Call of Games at 65, the usual. And this is where I was vlogging heavily and blowing up on YouTube. So all the footage is out there to see, you've seen sort of what my body used to look like. Then, I think things started to slowly change with my mental health due to numerous things. One being that I felt like the stress and pressure I put on myself. S certain things to do with my relationships, certain things to do with my sport, and certain things absolutely to do with injury. I started to experience, and at this time I didn't really, it was just a slow burner, but I started to experience anxiety. Didn't really know what it was, certainly to what I, did, what I know about it now. I noticed over a period of months, and especially the way that my, my friends and my family would talk to me, the weight just started to, to slowly drop, drop off. And very, like before I knew it, I was like 63, 62. And as I just told the story, for five years straight, I was 66, 67, comfortably. Like, ate well, trained hard. And then 62 and a half, and it just it kind of came out of nowhere, and I'm gonna tell you why. I missed out on a couple of competitions because of injury. Then I had the big neck, the neck thing. The documentary's out on, on YouTube to my channel, it reached half a million people, which was an amazing project, but I was very, very open about my story um, with mental health. The anxiety had ramped up. Uh, my behavior started to deteriorate and spiral out of control. I was drinking a lot of alcohol. And then the neck was sort of a pivotal moment. I went from, when I hurt it and had a couple of weeks off training, then I had the surgery and then I had another four weeks off training. So there was six weeks, no gymnastics. At that point, I was 58. So I'd 
near enough from what my comfortable weight was as a professional athlete, I lost 10 kilograms, which I think is over a stone in weight. And I've always been eight to 10% body fat. So the weight loss that I had was not, and it was all muscle pretty much. Um, I actually think I gained body fat as I dropped the weight. But what I found out what it was, what was the, the biggest culprit I think for me was anxiety. And I just, I went from being a, a ravenous athlete, like hungry all the time, struggled with binge eating in the past. And I've told that story a little bit on previous vlogs. To then, I just felt sick every time I went to eat. And with having feelings of anxiety, never got hungry, ever. I think for periods of months it was sort of when I, when I rapidly lost all the weight to 58. I sort of felt anxious a lot of the time, all the time, very dull sometimes, extremes and panic attack either then. You can imagine in those periods of months I just, hunger was just, didn't exist. And then when I did come to, I had to eat meals, I, I had to eat when I came to it. And I'm, I'm still struggling with this now to be honest. I'd eat a half a plateful, if that, and be full to the point where, you know, when you feel uncomfortably full and sick. So I'd, I'd kind of battled with that. I really, really got help, I got a lot of help with my mental well-being. And I think because it was such a long period of time, it kind of became habitual. My stomach probably shrunk a lot. And I'm right now sitting at around 60 kilograms, which is still very low, still very, very low. Yeah, I think it was a huge worry for me, for my family, for my friends. But I think maybe a lot of people watching this might connect with that journey a little bit. When you become very busy or become very stressed or start to feel these feelings, sometimes nutrition and food and what you put in your body is just a second thought. And I feel, I feel like I've felt like that for a long time. And to be honest, I could never really get it back. I could never really, I think, you know, from the neck, I did come back and I was at a high level before I hurt my shoulder and, you know, came to retirement. I still never really pushed higher than at 63 kilos and never could never really get back to the strong, powerful Niall Wilson athlete that I felt I was in, in the run up to my first Olympic games and the success that I had. And, and it was my it was my journey, I, I wouldn't change it. I think this the stuff I've been through mentally, it's been important to my growth and to becoming a person. And, and I, I really do believe things happen for reasons. And we're sat here today as a retired athlete and we're moving on to different things and different chapters of, of my life. And, you know, if I hadn't been through the struggles and adversity I had, then I wouldn't be the person sat here today, who by the way is never, never perfect, always wanted to grow. I still have many, many troubles. I mean, I've, I've been brutally honest as well, like and those who watched the documentary. In the midst of my worst points, I actually started smoking. Obviously it's horrendous, I, I shouldn't have. I still struggle with it a little bit now. I'm like a vape at the moment. Obviously that habitual with nicotine, but that wasn't a great thing for my appetite at the time. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, an evolution of constantly learning about myself. Uh, you know, hopefully people can connect with this story. Me being really open and honest about it might think make people feel not so much alone. And it's kind of me being accountable to you guys and actually saying all this out loud is sort of a step for me selfishly to try and change my habits. And, and you know, I need training in my life. I'm an athlete. I've done a few months retirement. I actually stopped training in August and I did the few months just sort of living without training and drinking wine and enjoying myself. I've kind of done that now and I'm just on the quest to try to find a routine where I train every day, sort of a, a training style that I love and enjoy and can still be inspiring with my physique and my body and what I can do with it. I think this next step for me is being openly honest look, honest with that and telling that telling that journey, telling that story. I think my, my step is gonna be doing bodybuilding. My, my best mate, we started training over Christmas, Luke Stone, he's incredible. He's got his own plans out now and. Uh, we started training together. That's certainly something that I need. I want to try and put on some muscle mass, see if I can get back to that 65, 66, 67 kilos Nile. Still lean, training hard, and just slowly build up my appetite and something that's helping me that is the way I'm like supplementing. Um, and that's a huge part of the Wilson Air Club community that we're building as well. And 
um, we sort of me telling my story. I'm really open and honest with the guys in the in the you know in the team in the Wilson Air Club Facebook group that that have signed up and just it's about us coming together and me helping you and all us helping each other smash your well-being goals, whatever they may be, and not just well-being. It's sort of setting you up to be in the best mental state possible for you to go after whatever you want to achieve. Um, so listen, if you've not heard of me say it, or you've not been interested in hearing about the opportunity, yeah, please click the link in the description to join the Wilson Air Club. We'll be, we'll be doing these reboots, certainly for the first six months of, of 2021. We've, we've proved now in January this three-week reboot can change people's mental, can change people's lives, can change their mentality, can change their body. Um, and essentially it's just myself and my team pulling us, everyone together and talking about our experiences and learning from them and helping people. So yeah, that's my that's my accidental weight loss story. Like I say, it wasn't actually meant to happen. It, it just sort of did. And maybe some of the words I use people can connect with. Uh, please comment below and tell me that you can and, and hopefully we can I can help. I think what's helping me now is just trying to build a routine and being aware in the midst of it. I wasn't really aware. I think I have a good mentality towards nutrition right now. I'm just not putting enough in and I still find it difficult with that feeling of being full and sick really quickly. But we go forward, we keep moving forward. Please subscribe if you haven't already, click, click the like button. If this was an interesting story, you smiled, you felt something inside. And I'll, um, I'll see you in the next one, lots of love.